So I was uh, given the daunting uh, task of actually uh, discussing or debating what do we do after fulfirinox and try to make a case for uh, gemcitabine-based therapies. <coughs> I must tell you that we really have to draw from uh, data that either is retrospective or does not exist. Uh, but I, I think at the end I convinced myself that I can, I can actually uh, uh, convince you that this is the standard. And in fact, I think uh, the easy part of this is I truly don't think at this point of time the JAK-STAT inhibitors are actually a standard. So I may win just on that basis, but we'll see. Uh, Jordan Berlin is a tough opponent. Um, so first of all, what do we think about second line uh, treatment in advanced pancreas cancer? I think that across the literature, there's ample amount of data and now prospective data that suggests that uh, uh, pancreas cancer patients are salvageable and second line therapy actually uh, uh, works uh, for many patients. So there's an advantage. Uh, there's data that supports that 5-FU-based therapies, uh, such as MM398 and oxaliplatin with 5-FU, uh, do actually benefit patients that progressed on uh, gemcitabine therapy. <coughs> uh, data also is available supporting um, gemcitabine-based therapies for patients who progressed on 5-FU, and frankly, there's even data that suggests that gemcitabine plus drug X may work when gem gemcitabine plus drug Y actually fails. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about this. So I think that there's a good case to be made uh, for gemcitabine-based therapies uh, uh, for patients who actually fail a full Firinox. So what does the data tell us? Now you notice uh, all the studies I'm going to be talking about are pretty small, but they actually are consistent, and that's the good news. Uh, so this is one of the first studies, gemcitabine following 5-FU failures. This actually came or was published just before gemcitabine got approved for first line. And uh, this was from Rothenberg, and it was actually a phase two study with 63 patients. Uh, the primary endpoint of the study was clinical benefit response. For those of you who may not remember what clinical benefit response, it's, since it's a primary endpoint that doesn't get used anymore, as a primary endpoint at least, it's essentially a composite of improvements in weight, uh, performance status, uh, pain, and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, uh, utilization of, of uh, uh, narcotics. So for patients who received gemcitabine following 5-FU failure, 27% of the patients actually had a clinical benefit, uh, which surpassed what was expected on that study, and median survival was close to four months. Uh, so a decent case to be made for gemcitabine as a single agent uh, following 5-FU failure. And it is tolerable. And there's a slew of, uh, of studies, actually, again, mostly retrospective, that looked at gemcitabine in combination with a platinum agent. Uh, and just uh, going through uh, those studies very quickly. Uh, so the two first studies, the malls, and actually this study is from our institution, uh, used a fixed rose gemcitabine plus oxaliplatin in patients who failed prior gemcitabine. And in our study, actually, we had 65% of the patients receiving more than two lines of therapies before they received gemox. And the response rate in both studies were very similar. Uh, survival was very similar. PFS was lower in ours. Uh, but they're eerily uh, uh, similar in, in most aspects, except ours had um, many more patients who were pretreated. So gemcitabine, uh, beyond gemcitabine, uh, failure actually seems to work. Now granted that the gemcitabine was changed in both studies from 30 minutes to a fixed dose rate. Another study with gemcis, again showed very similar trends. Uh, and then you go down the line with the other uh, studies with more complicated regimens uh, that also showed that in gemcitabine failures, uh, a gem and a platinum strategy may actually uh, work. So now we're gonna, going to try to build the case for the regimens we now use more commonly in the clinic, and that's gemcitabine plus not Beclitaxel. And again, we're trying to make a case here. The first study is with single agent not Beclitaxel, uh, and that's in pretreated patients. Actually, this was a prospective study, probably the only one I'm going to be talking to other than the gemcitabine 
uh, following five of you failure. Small study, 19 patients. Now, the majority of those patients actually failed gemcitabine, and 5% had prior fulfirinox. So it doesn't really apply to the title of my discussion, but it just shows you that napbaclitaxel as a single agent may have activity in the second line with an interesting survival, less interesting progression-free survival, and one responder out of the 19 patients. Not too bad, but not impressive. Uh, there was another study, now 20 patients, and this was retrospective. Now, all, all these patients failed prior gemcitabine, 40% of them failed fulfirinox, no responders, a bunch of stable diseases. Um, Medium progression-free survival is what you, you would expect for this line of therapy, a little bit better, maybe 3.7 months, and survival of 5.3 months. So similar, tolerable. So napaclitaxel is interesting in this setting, uh, but I think it makes much more sense to combine with gemcitabine. And there's, I'm not going to show you this. This was a 12-patient study, so even smaller than this, that looked at, at uh, napaclitaxel and gemcitabine napaclitaxel, and uh, the progression-free survival was superior uh, for the gemcitabine plus napaclitaxel. I just didn't feel like I, I could, with all due conscience, put a slide about a 12-patient study with two arms. <laughs> but I had to mention it. So uh, how about fulfirinox and the experience with gemcitabine following fulfirinox failure? Uh, another excellent retrospective analysis from Darosha Lino. Uh, with 20 patients, 100% uh, actually had prior fulfirinox. So this is all patients who were treated with fulfirinox, and their medium to try, uh, time to treatment failure from fulfirinox was five months. So the median survival on this study was 5.7 months and progression-free survival two months, which is pretty much what you see with those 5-FU-based regimens, 5-FU-MM398, 5-FU-Oxaliplatin, very similar uh, when you actually apply uh, the numbers from this study uh, to uh, the uh, other published studies. Another study looked at gemcitabine plus uh, napaclitaxel in refractory pancreas cancer. This was, again, another single institution analysis of 23 patients uh, with prior therapies that included gem, gem oxali, and fulfirinox. Interestingly, in this one, they've seen four responders in refractory patients. Two of them were actually uh, had prior fulfirinox. So gemcitabine and napaclitaxel seem to actually induce some level of benefit in that group of patients. Uh, with six stable diseases. The median survival uh, was five months, again, along the lines of what you would expect. Uh, another, there's a lot of them. Uh, another uh, study with gemcitabine and napaclitaxel. This time, all patients failed fulfirinox. Uh, this was a little larger study, 28 patients to be exact. And the median interval from fulfirinox to uh, gemcitabine and napaclitaxel was five weeks. So these patients were started on the regimen within five weeks of failure. They did report five partial responders, eight stable disease and 12 progressive disease patients. And overall survival was a little short from six months and the time to tumor failure a little short than three months. So again, very consistent with what you expect from second line uh, studies. Uh, the problem of course is that the median dose density or intensity from the study was 60%, which would be expected with a jam napaclitaxel given standard, i.e. weekly. And this is why, and I know Eileen mentioned this a little bit, we actually collected our own data with a modified regimen of gemcitabine and napaclitaxel. This is given every other week. Now we're actually up to 65 patients in the first line, and we have about 30 patients in the second line. And what I can tell you at least, in the first line, that the numbers look still very similar. PFS and OS look very similar to, uh, to what you have here, uh, five months and close to 11 months in terms of survival. Uh, the advantage is, of course, the toxicities are much better when you skip that day eight. Neuropathy, actually, grade three and four was observed as all, in only one patient, so 2% versus 19% uh, as uh, with a weekly regimen and other toxicities were better, and we only had 8% usage of GCSF. Uh, so if you want to consider gem napaclitaxel in the second line, I would suggest, especially after fulfirinox, which is quite uh, a toxic regimen, I would suggest that you consider this regimen. So now, uh, spend just uh, 
60 seconds or so just talking about uh, what Jordan is gonna, going to be discussing as a potential uh, standard for patients who fail fulfirinox. This, I remind you, is actually in gemcitabine failure and not in fulfirinox failure. And this is the recap study, which is capecitabine plus minus roxolitinib. I'm really just going to focus on the high points. This was a negative study. Uh, thus, I don't really believe that you can take a negative study and claim that you could apply this as a standard. As you see, the survival is very similar. Even when you actually go to those patients who you claim that there is a significant inflammatory component with CRP more than 13, and I remind you the phase three study actually lowered this down to 10. And even when you look at those patients with CRP more than 13, uh, the survival advantage at best may be close to one month. But even less intriguing is when you look at the progression-free survival in the most selected patient group, the difference was one week. One week. We make fun of erlotinib, which, is, which had the two weeks advantage, one week. So Jordan, I don't know how you're gonna actually explain that to justify your standards. So anyways, let me conclude. Um, gemcitabine alone or gemcitabine-based combinations are considered standard of care following fulfirinox failure in patients with metastatic pancreas cancer. I think if you want to choose a modified uh, regimen of gemcitabine and napaclitaxel, uh, would be optimal, the Ohio State University regimen, if choice is made for this regimen. Uh, phase three trials are needed to evaluate, evaluate, of course, the potential benefit. I've shown you a bunch of phase two and retrospective studies. So, of course, you know, take them at face value. I think we do need to study gemcitabine-based therapies in clinical trials following fulfirinox failure. JAK-STAT inhibition does not seem to produce a benefit in patients with metastatic pancreas cancer. And I remind you again, although the argument is going to be made about fulfirinox, this study was following a technically weaker regimen prior gemcitabine and still didn't show the benefit. At best, I think a subgroup of patients with CRP evaluation may have what I call a marginal benefit that would not actually allow it to be considered even a standard at this point. Thank you. <clears throat>